Thank you very much, Melissa. My name is actually a trick okay. so that people pay attention when um, <laughs> someone pronounces it wrong. Uh, Thank you very much, everyone, for being here and also for giving me the honor of sharing the stage with Midori and Yoyoma. I'm completely starstruck right now, and apologies in advance if I mix up my, my thoughts. Um, first of all, before, before I go into the content of what I want to talk about, I also want to take a moment to remember all the young peace builders on the front lines. Um, as we speak, there are young people in Somalia, in Iraq, in Colombia, in Libya, who are in various ways promoting peace in their communities, mediating conflicts among tribal groups, armed groups, and really advocating and um, even peacekeeping in some of the most um, advanced, complex humanitarian settings and uh, conflict settings in around the world. So I take this moment on the International Day of of peace to remember uh, the sacrifices and the bravery and courage of young peace builders around the world. I also want to say a big hello to the, all the young people watching us from Kosovo. I had the opportunity to visit Kosovo earlier this year to join the third national youth forum, uh, Kosovo Youth Forum that Esarachdi uh, Sahir Tanin organized um, through the UNMIC. And I've also seen firsthand how the young people in Kosovo are working together across their lines of ethnicity ethnicity and boundaries of religion and caste and all the differences uh, to come together to find common solutions to their issues. So with that in mind and with all these experiences that I referred to um, in, in this uh, start of my speech, when I go to places, I ask young people, what does peace mean to you? And I also ask the same question from you. I want you to think in your mind, what does peace mean to you as a young person? The answers that I usually get is, um, it's, it's definitely rarely the absence of conflict. The answers that I usually get is, peace for me is doing the job I love. Peace for me is getting to marry the person that I love. Peace for me is to have the freedom of expression, to be able to express my thoughts in freedom. Peace for me is to be able to get an education that I like that I, and I'm passionate about. So peace for us looks like different things. And when we put that in the context of climate change and climate action, if we are not going to have a planet, a decent planet, a healthy planet, a livable planet in the next 20, 30 years, how are we go even going to talk about peace? When somebody asks you, what do you want to be in the future? How can we even think about 10, 15 years, 10 years, 20 years down the line? when we don't even know if we are going to have a planet to live in. So we need to put all of this in context and really see peace as a broader con con concept, a concept that allows all of us to live a livable, peaceful life and have our well-being as human beings assured. And when we go specifically then into climate change and in the case that we are unable to listen to the science and act on science and below keep the temperature rise below 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius, then the consequences will be dire. And young people like you will have your future in a very detrimental situation. So with all of this, we've seen how young people take this very seriously and have come to the streets to demand for action from our world leaders. Um, I think the good news is that um, we are the largest generation in the world. Our world has never been this young. Half of the world's population right now is under 30 years. So we need to use this as our power. We are also the most educated generation of young people. We are also very aware of climate change and climate action than the generations before us. We have social media as a tool that helps us connect with each other from our countries, but also from other parts of the world. But social media also as a tool that we can hold policymakers accountable. And with all of this connected, I believe that our generations, millennials and Gen Z together, can create a wave, can create a huge wave, a huge wind that can turn the tide and that can move the direction of huge titanic-like systems that we have in our world today from our po political to social to economic models. 
So I count on all of you to do the best in your individual capacity to act on climate action. It could be that you join a school, uh, the strikes for climate or the protest for climate. It could be that you choose to fundraise for an organization that works on environmental activism. It could be that you join a youth organization that organizes climate activism. It could be that um, tomorrow you join us for the Youth Climate Summit that we are hosting ahead of the Secretary General's Climate Summit uh, on Monday. Monday, you can follow the Climate Summit online, tweet and use the advocacy material available to you to really raise your voices and push our leaders so that they take the right action, they, they listen to the science and they are responsible and take the action uh, to ensure that we as young people have a livable planet to live in. So thank you very much.